this is our homesteader uh, cargo conversion into a, tra a camper trailer and uh, we ordered it from homesteader to turner trailers in Belfound, ohio and they're an excellent dealer they took very good care of us we had them add six inches onto the height uh, we had the interior insulation package in the walls they added that they put a couple windows in the side for us. They're like RV slider windows. And we had this uh, front door. They added this RV style front door, which gives you the, the, uh, the, uh, the screen door closer on that. Uh, we laid the interior out in AutoCAD, just 2D AutoCAD using block dimensional drawings with what we wanted to put in the trailer. And that's how we came up with the meeting of the 20 foot, 20 foot configuration. Uh, they also put the framing in for the AC system, which we ended up installing the AC system, but they had to put the framing in for us. And so it's worked out very, very well for us. We're happy with it. Maybe change one or two things, but nothing major. Also upgraded the tires, one size up to the heavier, the heavier size 15. So I think it's a wider with a heavier um, heavier GVW range. Low capacity. So going around here. Um, starting up here. We put on the propane pan to hold the two propane bottles. Uh, we went with a uh, double battery tray. You can see it's just angle with U-bolts to hold it in place. And the battery trays are from Amazon. So I got room for two there. And we just went with a single bottle regulator as opposed to the automatic switch over. But this is a dual stage uh, regulator and we got it from uh, it's a uh, buddy from the Mr. Buddy heater series we got a Camco and the first Camco we got it did not work and it was very dissatisfactory so uh, we got this and we haven't had any problems since so this is made by uh, uh, the pe same people that make buddy heaters um, we used to have a crank on here we put this electric jack on so with the crank we had these push backs so we had room to crank so now we can actually move these bottles forward if we decide to but this, you know, this jack makes a nice addition for sure so it's electric yep it's electric jack mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're going on. Uh, we have a uh, suburban furnace propane furnace that's the venting for it have the 30 amp plug in for the shore power. I went with the disconnect type where the whole cord comes off. These are just jacks that we put on uh, to when the trailer's unhooked from the vehicle to keep it from tipping back if we're loading a motorcycle or anything like that. Uh, this is the rear uh, gate. We sleep with these open. There's a latch inside which we uh, we need to get out of the trailer, flip the latch, and push the gate back. That's our escape route. So we have we don't have a, an escape window in yet. Uh, we're gonna put one either on the curb side or the road side. We haven't decided which, but one we're gonna get one installed. This next step. So we've already had two camping outings in it, so get some kind of the bugs worked out. Here's a, just a simple jack antenna now. And it consists of uh, PVC and a mount to hold the jack antenna. And then it's got a piece of treated wood to interface these, these clamps with the trailer to bolt into the side of the trailer. And we used the existing screw holes that were already in the trailer to mount this. Just got longer bolts. So here again, just use the existing holes to secure them. Here's the... Uh, fresh water fill 
and the reason I went with this side is because uh, this is the side that's most convenient for me. They're usually on the other side, but that fills the, the uh, fresh water tank. So I've got it on this side, so I just pull the unit forward and my hose is right at the house. That's how, I, that's how we fill it up. It's called an 18-foot uh, awning. This is a 20-foot trailer. So we had to figure out what all we wanted to put in the trailer and we designed the basically designed the inside uh, before we ordered the trailer and that's how we figured out we needed a uh, 20 foot long. That's how we figured out we needed a 20 foot long trailer. Standard on. Let me open it up. And dry out. I recall now the last time we used it with rain. Good thing we opened it. This requires, since it's a longer awning, this requires a center post. Okay. There's an, there's an assembly that goes on that. We need to put the roller on to protect the uh, protect the awning fabric from the door too. On the inside, just did a basic as basic as possible build. We just like basically Luon and uh, two by four and uh, two by two construction, just basic solid construction. Um, got LED, these LED lights came off of Amazon. So we've got 12 volt lighting and 12 volt power. And we got a 120 volt electrical panel. So this is the 120 volt electric down through here. And this guy coming up here, this is the 12 volt power. And we just run the line across there, across the periphery of the trailer and then pick off any voltage that we need whenever we need 12 volts. There's a wire here that's got the 12 volts on it so we can attach whatever we want there. And then it's protected by a fuse. I think I ran two circuits up there. I got two circuits that I ran up there. We just use this plastic this is this is 12 volt this whole thing is 12 volt okay and this one is this is 120 and this is 120 for the AC system so we have seating in this area and bed and makes obviously those are for beds as well and then we have this area here, we keep this open. We have an extra cot that can go here, or we can have up to three chairs. So as you can see, there's plenty of room for sitting around and talking on a rainy day, which is what we wanted. And the kitchen area here, just a simple, simple area here. Rest room here with a porta potty, and um, then the rear bed is a is a queen bed that is on a platform. And the uniqueness about this platform is if you want to pull the motorcycle in, you take this uh, take this cushion off to the side or just or just leave it out if you're taking the motorcycle along. And these guys, this this guy folds up like a drawbridge. They both fold up and the motorcycle goes right in here. And then the floor there's tie downs for the motorcycle. That's everything we had uh, we ordered from Turner Trailers. So they put in tie downs for us before. Here's that disconnect for the door that we talked about. If there's a situation we need to exit the trailer, there we go. We're out. Just until we get the uh, until we get our escape window. I'm not sure we'll do it here or here. 
Uh, this unit here encloses the springs just as a safety precaution. This heavy wood encloses the springs for the uh, balancer for the door. So there's the thermostat here for the 12 volt furnace. Uh, we have a fantastic fan unit in here that we haven't, I haven't hooked up the voltage to it yet. Again, just simple cabin style. We just like simple construction for partitions and that sort of thing. And did you install this fan on your own? Yeah, that's just, you know, we just we frame this in here. Uh, frame this in. And uh, we had, it was a little tough to find the wood that was the same thickness of the metal. You had to find, I had to go and find the correct wood. And I don't remember what wood I ended up with, but it was a special kind of wood. So this height would match. There would be no transition there. Okay. So, yep. You just frame it in and then drill four holes. It's a 14 inch by 14 inch then you just connect the dots with a saber saw from down here or above mm -hmm. and then when you screw you know you put the butyl tape on the uh, vent and screw it down and then seal over the top of the screws and that's pretty much it there's lots of videos on YouTube on how to do that so and this is just a divider if someone wants to do a change in the changing room or restroom that's just a divider that's simple shower curtain from Walmart. So Great. This is just a shower rod and just mounted it, you know, fixed it to the, to the side there. You have a little extra piece of wood there. Yep. And well, then fastened in right here. Fastened right there. Acts as a towel rod as yep. well. Yep. Some organization. This is, a, this is just a uh, this is just a yard sale this came out of a um, scrap um, truck camper and this was for sale of the yard sale so I picked that up and I just framed this around and put a put a space there to mount it, a little bra brace down to the bottom and it connects to the gray water tank and we'll show you the gray water tank this you see is the vent and connects to that same pipe and goes up and vents out the ceiling for the you know to vent the, uh, the gray water gray water tank Simple construction down there. You see a duct, some duct work for the, uh, the furnace because we needed we needed to get heat back through there. I'll probably enclose that sometime. Bar sink, nothing really fancy, just a bar sink. Here's our gray water. This is a busy area. A lot of stuff went on here. A lot of thought went into it, and uh, I can show you. Uh, there's the electrical panel there for the 120 volts. We just ran the 120 volt uh, connector, that port we showed you on the outside, just ran it right in the back of that. So it's right there. So that's the main disconnect. It's a four, four place. It's got a main disconnect, AC, and then I think curbside and roadside plugs, outlets. Nothing too much to it. And then there's that fence. Yeah, this is, the, there. this is the furnace, and it goes in here. It's right underneath the microwave. We just made a platform for it. This is the air intake. This is one of the vents for the furnace. And this is raised up on a platform to allow us to run the ductwork underneath the gray water tank. You'll see there's a there's a space there where it's where it's uh, the ductwork passes under. And then this is just a simple out the side, out the bottom of the trailer, and then out the side drain. You just open this and it just shoots out the side. Or you can connect a hose to it if you desire. You know, you can run it into a connection of a campground. So this is inside. There's no tankage underneath this trailer whatsoever. So it's totally, um, you know, it's not, nothing's going to freeze up on you. As long as you have heat in the trailer, you're, you know, you're good. Now the floor's not insulated, but... We're not planning on doing a lot of a lot of wintertime camping. It's just a standard. It's just a, a standard camper for us. Piece of uh, uh, piece of I don't know what you call this stuff. It's just from the yards. And then we put a stop here in case something slides and hits the like a stop board. It's a good and idea. Here's the water pump. 
And here's the 12 volt. Obviously, we got a lot of cleanup to do on the old 12 volt wiring. That's just where we have it coming in. We have access to our fuses right there and uh, water pump right there. There's our fresh water tank back there. Let's uh, put it on the curbside and uh, you can see it's, I think it's like a 22 or 25 gallon, I'm not sure on that, on that. And then there's a storage, kind of like a storage thing built on top of that. We haven't quite figured out what mainly that thing is for, but it's right now it's just storage right now. We need to put in some more storage and uh, we're going to change these front pounds as to where we can slide totes under there. That's one thing we've discovered. We need to be able to slide totes under these beds. So we'll end up opening these faces up. These fronts up. These are the seating units. And again, a friend built these, did a wonderful job. Uh, just basically on hinges. And uh, you can see these guys here, these wires here. If you see a wire like this in this trailer, this is 12 volt. That's not 110, so we run all the, the uh, 110 inside plastic conduit. Here's the, the heater for the front area. And uh, you can see some of the area there for the furnace where it's connected, that sort of thing. So that's how that's connected up. And the reason this area here got so busy, this center section, is because we wanted the tankage, all the, the, the gray water and the, and the uh, fresh water to be over the axles. So, and we didn't want the furnace to be under any of the beds. So that that's why this area got so busy. Uh, we have a lot going on in there and that was hard to figure out. That was like moving things around half inch by half inch to get them laid out. And so that was that was quite a challenge to get all this stuff in this one area, but that's what that's what had to happen. So that's pretty much it. We put some insulation in here. Our plan is to uh, uh, cover this eventually with uh, Menards has uh, uh, it's not quite Luon, it's a, but it's a Luon type thin wood. I think it's birch ply. It's really wonderful. Uh, it's this stuff right here. This is the, this is what they call our birch ply. It's really beautiful for the price. So we'll cut sections here and put these in and screw them in here. Uh, and then this, of course, is the reflectix that wraps around that corner. We just put these, start out with these panels, and we could still feel this was like a radiant heat was coming off of these just these short sections. So we enclose those with the reflectics. So the other thing we did was underneath um, we coated the floor with Black Beauty fence post paint from Tractor Supply and uh, it was really nice because that was all bare under there and I didn't want water to get into the wood so we found out that um, when we painted it it didn't create a fume issue in the trailer, so that's a that was a big uh, that was a big issue with we didn't want fumes in the trailer, so we painted a small area. And discovered it didn't create fumes in the trailer, and we painted the rest of the of the bottom, and that included all the propane lines, well the one propane line, and any fittings that we did underneath, and then we sealed up the bottom of the floor. And this is just standard plywood. What we discovered there are some uh, trailers out that have a treated with some sort of uh, water repellent what we discovered was that created an odor in the trailers that we checked out that had that type of floor I don't recall the name of the floor but it's really popular in, uh, uh, in trailer construction as well as the uh, glued in on the side some of the sides on these trailers on the outside the outside panel is on instead of screwed. So when we were looking at those trailers, there was an odor. Didn't know if it was the flooring or the glue that was used to hold the siding on. So we went without the flooring with the, with the standard floor and the screwed on sides that, that are outside because we didn't want any fumes on the inside as little as possible. So that's about it.
here, you found the work that we did underneath. And here, the work that we did underneath. There's the uh, propane line that runs towards the back. And we use a piece of uh, pressure treated um, lumber screwed to the framing. And then we put rubber hose around the U bolts. And then that's how we secured the uh, propane line from the front to the middle of the trailer. And right over there, we did the same thing with that uh, with that gray water drain that just goes out the side, and that was secured on the pressure treated with U bolts with uh, rubber hose covering. Here's seat shows this uh, Black Beauty fence post paint uh, in action. It looks looks pretty good. And then we also sealed around the corners with sealant. Uh, we actually had more odor from the sealant than we had from this uh, from all this paint that we did. We just wanted to seal that up for, you know, if it gets wet and that sort of thing, which it will. Okay. And that's about it for the trailer. Um, there's a few things we plan on doing. Uh, this window is another thing that came with that camper uh, door package. Uh, we're going to modify those uh, side, front and side lounges. Mm -hmm. um, to put uh, so we can slide totes in there, and we're going to add some storage, uh, and that's going to be it for you know it's going to be it for right now as far as what we're going to, what we have planned for right now. So thanks for watching our video. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you got something out of it.